Hello, in this video we are going to talk about zero-cost abstractions in Rust. First, let's see what is a zero-cost abstraction. As stated by C++ programming language creator, a zero-cost abstraction has two statements or follows two statements, follows two rules. What you don't use, you don't pay for, and second, what you do use, you couldn't hand code any better. Let's see what each statement means. For first, imagine a Golang routine. Every Golang binary comes with a scheduler and a runtime that contains code for managing and running Go routines, whether you use them or not. So we can say that Golang, Golang Go routines are not zero cost because even if you don't use them, you are paying the cost for them. Now compare this to Rust async await. Runtime just gets bundled if you explicitly install it in your cargo.tml file and you say and you're basically saying that you want the async stuff to be bundled in your program. So we can say that Rust async await is zero cost because if you just if you use it, you get the code for it. Now let's take a look at the second statement. What you do use, you couldn't hand code any better. In Golang and almost all mainstream programming languages, there is a concept called interfaces as a way of defining shared behavior for different types. But there is a slight difference in how Golang implements interfaces and Rust implement traits. In Golang, as explained in this link, each interface type in Golang is basically a two word in memory is basically two word in memory first word points to the interface metadata and second word points to actual data behind the interface actual implementation of that interface so if you take a look at this code in here you see that we have a type b called which is a struct and we have a method called string which is basically the implementation of fmt.stringer interface in the standard library. Now in the main function, when we define the variable a and variable b, they both have the method string on them because a is fmt.stringer and has the string method and b is just the our pointer to our struct. But calling a string method on a has more cost than calling a string method on b because a string method on A, calling a string method on A, has an extra dereference because of the memory structure that we saw. But the B is almost an aesthetic dispatch, almost like how Rust handles the stuff. So we can say that probably Golang, Go, Golang interfaces are not zero cost because you are getting some extra stuff in your runtime. And you, you could write it in a faster way if you don't use interface features at, as a, at, at, at all. But let's take a look at how Rust implements the interface and traits and this kind of capability. In this code, we have a trait called Stringer, which is almost a copy of the Golang Stringer interface. And then we have a type called MyType, as a, as a struct and it and we implement the stringer trait for my type then we have a function that uses this stringer type as its input so how does rust do this dot string call rust uses a method called monomorphization which is a method that that uh, that is basically generates a function for each implementation of this stringer in compile time so if we have an implementation for a stringer implementation of a stringer for my type it will generate a function that gets my type and does the logic 
that we specified here look at the, this function in here it's almost it's it's similar to what rust actually generates in compile time when you say you want to implement the stringer it generates a function that has the same signature as the actual trait it gets the self self is here is my type and just returns the value and just does the logic that we told it to do so so basically a trait method call like here in rust is not is not different than calling a function because rust in compile time replaces this call this call to the method trait to with this call to the simple function that it generated from the trait implementation we have so basically a trait method call in rust is just a function call and it's as cheap as that so we can again see that rust implements the zero cost abstraction and we couldn't hand, hand code this trait uh, behavior any better and if we use this trait uh, feature in rust there is no extra cost that we are affording uh, because of using this feature zero cost abstractions are a core value to rust and knowing them and now how to how they are implemented helps us understand the language much better thank you please um, comment and subscribe if you like the content